Hello and welcome, a very warm welcome to a new episode of The Green Bean. My name is Katie, also known as Katie Green Bean, and this little cutie is my best friend, Jack. In this episode, I've got lots to share with you, painting, knitting and spinning. Um, I'm going to give you an update on the two new knitting patterns that I'm working on, both designing the booklets and knitting on the samples. And I'm working my way towards knitting my first, well, spinning and then knitting my first hand spun garment. So I'm going to give you an update on that as well. But before we dive in to the creative content, let's head out onto Dartmoor for a walk with me and Jack. When it comes to painting, all of my time lately has been focused on preparing my two new knitting patterns for print. Um, if you're not familiar, I am an illustrator first and foremost, so when I design and self-publish my knitting patterns, I like them to have beautifully illustrated booklets um, as beautiful objects. I love making beautiful printed things, but I also want my patterns to be something that people might collect, keep on a shelf, treasure, um, and be a durable item that can withstand being tucked in a knitting bag. I get frustrated with printing out PDF patterns, um, which I do frequently, and they end up stuffed in this bag and then that bag, and then I put a cup of tea down on it and it leaves a mark, and it ends up looking very tattered. And I wanted to design and create something that might last a little bit longer than a printout from a computer. So that's my aim with designing my knitting patterns. And um, to catch you up, if you haven't watched recent episodes, this autumn I'm releasing two new patterns, a pair of socks and a hat to complement my cardigan, the fairy ring cardigan, which I published last year. And all of the pieces are almost in place. It's getting very close to my print deadline. I've spent the last couple of weeks working diligently on these paintings for the covers and they are getting there. This is the second episode where I've shared these paintings so you can hop back a few to see the beginning of the process. Um, today I'm working into them a little bit more, adding some finer details, refining things a little bit. I always think that my animal characters look a bit strange and spooky at this stage of my drawing because I like to add the faces last. They're really the final finishing touches. Um, so I leave that until the very last moment. So it does mean that these red squirrels are looking a bit weird and creepy without any eyes, noses or mouths at this point. Um, so here you can see me just adding a bit of shadow and highlight to bring these squirrels to life. Um, I started with just a layer of flat colour and now I'm adding a little bit of darker paint to the edge and then using a slightly wet brush to blend that in and really give the, the effect of shadows on the squirrel's body.
Now for the fun bit of these illustrations, I need to add the um, the patterns themselves. So for the socks, I'm putting the socks on a washing line. It was it took a lot of thought to consider how to illustrate these covers because I thought it might look a bit strange for the squirrels to wear socks, especially because this is a knitting pattern for humans, not for squirrels. So I did a lot of different sketches before arriving at the idea of the socks being on a washing line and the squirrels just admiring them from, from a distance. For the hat, it was a little bit more straightforward to decide how to include the design in the illustration because I could simply put the hat on a squirrel's head. And okay, because of their big fluffy ears, it's not quite going to fit in the same way as it's going to fit on a human head, but it works well enough and it gives a cute cute concept for an illustration and it means that this front cover tells you exactly what's inside the booklet, which I'm happy with. I think I said in the last episode where I shared the beginning of these paintings that I've been working on them for a couple of weeks now and by working on them for a couple of weeks, I don't mean full time eight hours a day. I mean, dipping in and out here and there among lots of different tasks. And um, I guess there are two reasons for that. One reason is that I'm really busy and I've got lots of different tasks on, but it also has a um, an impact on the painting, which is really helpful. It means that I have a chance to walk away and mull things over rather than my tendency if I work on something for too long in one single stretch is to overthink it and overwork it and stepping away and coming back seems to mitigate that a little bit. But as I say, it is also for practical reasons because I've got lots of irons in the fire at the moment preparing for this pattern launch. It's not just about illustrating these booklets, I also need to typeset the patterns, double check all of the figures. Um, I'm still finishing off the samples as you'll see shortly. Um, it's time to plan a photo shoot. I've got stickers and washi tapes arriving and new enamel pins, all of which need packaging and preparing. There is lots going on and for that reason I don't have an exact date to give you yet for when these patterns are going to be released and ready for the world. Um, I will obviously make a video and share share the news with you here on my channel, but if you want to be the first to hear about it, my newsletter is probably the best place. And I've put a link in the description box below if you're not signed up to my newsletter already.
So there we go. I think I can officially call all four of these illustrations finished and I'm really pleased with how they've turned out. So there's only one task remaining. Well, actually there's several tasks remaining, but there's only one task of the painting remaining, which is to give these cuties some eyes, noses and mouths. And I'm always really nervous of this bit because of course if it goes wrong, there's nothing I can do to change the illustration. So fingers crossed, I'm going to be pleased with how it looks and um, they're going to look as cute as I hope they will. I've been making slow but steady progress on my second fairy ring sock since I last spoke to you. Possibly not as much progress as you might expect for a couple of weeks of knitting, but progress nonetheless. And the reason it's going slowly is because, to be honest, the knitting is now the lowest priority item of all the items on my list for getting these patterns ready for publication. That's because this is the second sock. I've already knitted the first sock so I know that the pattern works and I knitted the first sock many months ago to get it off to my pattern writer and editor. I've actually got it back. So here is the finished fairy ring sock. You can see I really don't have very much left to go on the second one. I'm so close to having a pair. But the reason I've slowed down is 
in order to focus on the painting that you've just seen, getting the patterns ready for print, the photo shoot will be the very last thing that happens. It's like a ceremonial moment of celebrating that this project is finished and ready for the world. And I think I'm finally reaching the point where I feel excited about it rather than nervous and terrified. It's always a bit scary. You know that I get scared about saying that I'm doing a thing and then for whatever reason circumstances or life gets in the way and I'm not able to do it when I said I was going to. I think all the pieces of this puzzle are finally coming together. Um, so as I say, not a lot of progress on the second sock to report, but a little bit. Um, and seeing as the first sock has come back to me, I can also show you, finally, the hat. Um, it's not completely finished yet because obviously, obviously these mushrooms need spots. And personally, I don't feel any knitted hat is complete without a pom-pom. Um, so it's nearly there, but I thought it would be nice for you to see the work in progress. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it fits. Let's just check. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Really pleased with it. Um, so just a bit of embroidery to do on this and a pom-pom, and then this will be ready for the photo shoot as well.
I've got a surprising amount of spinning to share with you in this episode because spinning has become my relaxation of choice at the moment. Um, because the sample knitting I'm doing is technically work, um, although I enjoy it, it's definitely my job. And because I'm now working towards a deadline, um, spinning has become the thing that I do when I'm looking to wind down in the evening. And I have been working on spinning up the Barn Owl fibre from John Arban Textiles, which was a limited edition from a couple of years ago, as my first garment spin. And I've been thoroughly enjoying it. I was a little bit worried that spinning more than 100 grams, because I've never spun more than 100 grams of anything before, I was concerned that I might get a little bit bored. But so far, absolutely not really enjoying the process and working with this fibre. I split my fibre into three for this spin because I'm intending to do a traditional three ply. Um, so I'm still working on the first bundle, which ended up being about 165 grams. I've got a little under 500 grams altogether. So it's going to be a scant amount for a garment, I think, but I'm going to go with it, see what I end up, and then figure out a solution once I know what quantity I've got. I'm definitely not at the stage of my spinning where I can pick the pattern before I've spun the yarn. So we'll just go with it and see how this turns out and figure out the next step once I've got a, um, a meterage and a yarn weight that I know what I'm working with. Thank you. 
thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Green Bean Podcast and for your continued support and joy in in experiencing my work. I'm always astounded by the lovely comments that I receive and how many people are watching these videos and interested in what I'm doing in my tiny studio here in Devon. Um, it makes it a real joy to share my work. So thank you for what you offer in return in your kind comments and in your support, whether that be telling other people who you think might like the videos or buying from my shop or supporting me on Patreon. I could not do it without any of those contributions. So huge thanks to you. And um, yeah, if you need to hear more from me between now and the next episode, the links to my Instagram, my Patreon and my newsletter are all in the description box down below. Thank you again so much for watching and being here and I will see you soon. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.